limits and continuity quiz. Yesterday in calculus class, we had this quiz, and some of my students wanted me to make a video of working out the problems for review sake. And uh, basically, that's the quiz is misnamed because even though the quiz is named limits and continuity quiz, we really ha aren't testing here continuity quite yet. So anyway, uh, problem number one, according to the table below, what is the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x? And then we're given the table below f of x, x and f of x here. And what we have is you're looking for the limit, for there to be a limit, the limit as x approaches c of f of x, some arbitrary number c has to equal and from the from the left side from the left has to equal the limit as x approaches c from the right side of f of x and so what you're looking for in this table is is there a number being approached as we come from the left but from the left it just looks like and of course with tables you don't have perfect information but it looks like as close as we can see, uh, the, the decimals are getting closer and closer. looks like maybe approaching 7. Well, on the right side, as we come from the right, we have negative 8, negative 7.87, blah, blah. We're approaching here negative 7, it appears anyway. So the limit being approached from the left is not equal to the limit being approached from the right. Therefore, the DNE, the limit does not exist, at least the best of our information. So that's going to be number one. Let's go on to problem number two. What is the limit as x approaches 4 of x minus 4 over x squared minus 16? Well, the, the first strategy to this, to figuring these out, is plugging in. Now, we see these things we should have to expect and so to get 0 over 0 so here we have plugging into x 4 for x we have 4 minus 4 over 4 squared minus 16 well 4 minus 4 is 0 in the numerator and 4 squared is 16 minus 16, 0 in the denominator. And I tell my students, when you have 0 over 0, you have the indeterminate. So we call this situation one where there's more work required. In this case, we're going to factor. So we have x minus 4 over quantity x squared over x squared minus 16. Okay. Factoring using a difference of squares, and you know you're going to have to be able to cancel things out on the bottom. So just by that, you'll know that one of the factors in the denominator is probably going to be x minus four, and then x minus four squared x plus four, and we have our cancellation. Our simplification is one over x plus four. Now we're going to plug in. So if we plug in 4 for x, we get 1 over 4 plus 4, which equals 1 8. So that will be our limit as x approaches 4 of, f of this function f of x. So 1 8. Okay. Next, problem 3. What is the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus x minus 6 over x squared plus 6x plus 8? And again, our first step is plugging in. So we have on the numerator 2 squared minus 2 minus 6. So let's see here. Right. So now it doesn't look like 
effect is coming out right. That's no, negative two, that's why. So you have plus negative. Okay, this negative x. If you got negative two squared, it's going to be four. And then this is negative, so you have minus negative two will be plus two. And then in the denominator, we have negative two squared plus six times negative two plus eight. So in the numerator, we have we have uh, 4 plus 2 minus 6. In the denominator, we have 4 minus 12 plus 8. And these will simplify to 0 over 0. And in this case, uh, since we're 0 over 0, we know that one of the factors here, and to just help in simplifying, we don't need to do this, but to have 0 over 0, this x, let's see, minus 2. If we plug in negative 2 for x, so we're going to have, we're going to have x plus 2, right? That's what's going to have to make this work. Because if we plug in negative 2 for x, this will be 0. And then to cancel out the denominator, one of the other factors is going to have to be x plus 2 also. And so we just, we just figure out the remaining factors here, which in the numerator, you're going to have what times 2 is going to be negative 6, what's well, going to be negative 3. So we have x minus 3. What times 2 equals 8? Well, 4 times 2, so we have 4 over here. And so if we multiply these together, we get our original quadratic trinomials, and we have cancellation here, and we are left with x minus 3 over x plus 4. And if we plug in here, we get we plug in negative 2, so we get negative 2 minus 3 in the numerator, in the denominator, we get negative 2 plus 4, which simplifies to negative 5 over 2, which you can also write as uh, negative 2.5. Okay, so those would be our, that'd be our answer. Okay, 2.5 up here. All right, next problem, 4. What is the limit as x approaches infinity? Okay, limits to infinity, okay, limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is what is a horizontal asymptote. I write ha for horizontal asymptote if this limit is a number, right? So we, if this exists, that is the horizontal asymptote. So what we do is we can look at our different, there are different rules for this that determine. Here we have a situation where we have a, a x squared in the numerator and a x to the power of 1 in the denominator. That means as we approach infinity, this one on the top is going to grow a lot faster than one on the bottom. So we're going to end up with we, we, I call it the, the cheat, thing we use is, is bow two. Bigger on top, bigger on top, undefined. So undefined, the horizontal asymptote does not exist. DNE does not exist. Undefined. Okay, problem five. What is the limit as x approaches negative seven of five x minus three? Well, first step is plug in. So we're going to take 5 times negative 7 minus 3. 5 times negative 7 is negative 35 minus 3 equals negative 38. And that's going to be our answer. Okay, problems 6 through 13 have to involve using this 
drawing here, this graph of g of x. Okay, we're asked first, what is g of negative 6? So we go to negative 6 on the x-axis, and we see above a hole and below a hole. So there is not, the function is not defined at x equals negative 6. So g of negative 6 does not exist. Now, this next one here, what is the limit as x approaches 6 from the negative side of g of x? And so we come over here to the left side, and we see what we're approaching. Well, we're approaching negative 3, just from the drawing. And what is the limit as x approaches 6 of g of x? Well, this tests the concept of the limit from the left side being the limit from the right. So from the left side, we have negative 3, right? And from the right side, we have, looks like, positive 3 equals 3. Do they exist? Let me know they're equal. No. So the limit as x approaches negative 6 of g of x does not exist. Now, problem 9, what is g of 2? Okay, so we come over to x equals 2, and we have a point filled in here at negative 1, 2, 3, 4. So negative 4 is our answer here. Um, then 10, what is the limit as, as x approaches 2 from the positive? And so here from the plus side, we're approaching 2. And so here we have it. Okay, we're right here. What are we approaching? Looks like kind of a vertical asymptote. So we'd say the limit as x approaches 2 from the plus side does not exist. Uh, what is the limit as x approaches 7 from the plus side? So here we are at 7. And we go right up here. To the graph. So from the right side, looks like we're approaching okay, right here. At, or at capital L is 4, so that's going to be 4. What is the limit as x approaches 7 of g of x? Well, that means left side and right side. Left side equals right side. From the left side, this, this uh, curve is continuous where x equals 7, and that value is also 4 from the left and right same. And what is g of 7? Well, in this case, the actual value, output value, is also is 4. So yeah, that's problem 6 through 13. Next, what is the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x if f of x equals x squared minus 3 when x is greater than or equal to 4, and uh, 2x plus 5 if x is less than 4. So here we should know that the limit exists if and only if the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of f of x equals the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of f of x. And for the left side, we use this bottom because x is less than when x is less than 4, the function is 2x plus 5. So we're going to have, on the left side, 2 times 4 plus 5 equals, on the right side, we have, we have 4 squared minus 3. On the left side, we have 8 plus 5. On the right side, we have 16 minus 3. 8 plus 5 is 13, and 16 minus 3 is also 13. So we say the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x equals 13. And the key thing we hit, we're looking for here is we're looking for a statement that the limit from the left side equals the limit from the right side. We're looking for the correct workings of the arithmetic, and we're working 
We're looking finally for the correct answer being boiled down. So those three things for full credit. Uh, next, last problem, uh, 15. What is the integral from 0 to 4 of x dx? Well, for those of you who are not my students, uh, this is going to be more for later on in the year when we take integration. We introduced that right at the beginning of the year, so I'm going to be throwing in simple problems. And so we look at the function x dx. So the function we're going to look at is f of x equals x. And this is simply a slope of, of 1, right? Rise over run. And so we're looking at this kind of situation here, this this f of x equals x. That's what we're looking at. And we're going from 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we're looking at this area between the line f of x equals x and the x-axis. So what is this area here? Well, on the base of this triangle, we have 4. And on this right side, we have 4. So the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, which equals 1 half of 4 times 4, which equals 1 half of 16, which equals 8. So that is our answer, 8 units. So that is the entirety of our limits quiz. and. Hope this is a helpful resource for you, and thank you for viewing.